All right, joining us now, CNN senior legal analyst and former federal prosecutor, Ellie Hoding. Ellie, great to see you this morning. What is this special grand jury and what power does it have? Yeah, John, so the grand jury is one of the most powerful tools that any prosecutor can have. Despite the name, it actually does not have that much in common with a trial jury. One of the few things they do have in common is they are both selected randomly from the general public. The same way you might get one of those dreaded jury notices in the mail, you can get a grand jury notice. Now, this jury will be sitting for six months. That's what makes it a special grand jury. Usually, grand jury sit for one month, this one's going to be impaneled for up to six months. It could end earlier than that, or the prosecutor can ask for permission to extend it beyond that. But that's a good ballpark figure for about how long this might take. The grand jury operates in secret. We will not know what's happening in that room. There, is, there will be no cameras in there. We will not get daily transcripts. The, the hallmark of the grand jury is secrecy. And importantly, the grand jury has the power to issue subpoenas. Those require people to testify, require people to turn over documents. It's a very powerful aspect of what the grand jury does. Now, a couple things about the grand jury. Of course, this grand jury has been impaneled by the Manhattan District Attorney, Cy Vance. It is a one-sided presentation. It's only the prosecutor, the grand jurors, and a court reporter. There's no judge. There's no defense lawyer. So it is extremely one-sided. You hear this expression, the grand jury would indict a ham sandwich. There's some truth to that. It's not an adversarial process like you'd have at trial. There are 23, up to 23 grand jurors in the room at a time, in contrast to a trial jury, which of course is 12. Now, in order to indict, you don't need all the grand jurors, right? You need a jury, a trial jury has to be unanimous to convict. All you need is a majority of the grand jury, 12 of the 23 grand jurors, and the standard of proof is way lower. Probable cause, that's down here as opposed to beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest standard in our system. So you have a, a lower bar to begin with. They're extremely persuadable by the prosecutor to begin with, and you only need a majority, which is why the saying goes, you can die in a ham sandwich. Exactly. Just the, the special grand jury, why would you call a special grand jury rather than just a grand jury? If you wanted a longer-term grand jury that's going to be able to absorb and make sense of a lot of information that you right. couldn't give them in, say, a day or a week or even a month. What charges are they looking at here? Yeah, so a lot of different financial-related charges here. The main gist of the investigation appears to be on how the Trump Organization valued its assets. The allegation or the belief is that at some points it would deflate the value of the assets when it came tax time, claim that their assets, including these, were worth less than they actually were to reduce the tax bill. At other times, they would allegedly inflate the value of these assets. If they were trying to get a bank loan, they would say, well, we're solvent. We have all these assets, so please give us a bigger bank loan. The grand jury also apparently is looking at potential tax charges involving Ivanka Trump. There was this very large payment, $747,000 from the Trump Organization to Ivanka Trump as a quote-unquote consultant while she worked there. There could be mm -hmm. tax implications. And Alan Weisselberg is being investigated for possible tax issues as well. Evidence. What yes. evidence are they looking at? So Michael Cohen, we know he's been talking to prosecutors. He himself has tweeted and said publicly, I will be the star witness. Let's see. It's Michael Cohen. We'll see if that pans out. We know that the DA has the tax returns. They went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court to get those tax returns, plus millions of other financial documents. They subpoenaed through an earlier grand jury evidence from Deutsche Bank, the primary loan lender to the Trump Organization. And then, very importantly, this one we don't know yet, so I'm going to put a, that's a question mark, Alan Weisselberg, if they can flip him, and he right. is, there's no evidence he's flipped yet, if they can flip him, he's the longtime chief financial officer of the Trump Organization, that's going to be critical. Watch and see if this grand jury subpoenas Alan Weisselberg or indicts him, and then watch and see if he flips. That's going to be key. This is hugely helpful, Ellie. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. Former federal prosecutor Laura Coates joins us now. Uh, Laura, there's that famous old saying that a grand jury could indict a ham sandwich if, if that's what <laughs> prosecutors want here. But, but this, is, this is in an advanced stage because Cyrus Vance, the Manhattan DA, has been investigating for two years and he has an enormous uh, amount of documents on hand as well as potentially cooperative witnesses. Uh, Michael Cohen uh, already shown that and, and targeting Alan Weisselberg, the, the longtime CFO, uh, of Trump organization, not clear if he if he will cooperate, but but he's got a lot of things in his arsenal here. How serious does convening a grand jury? How serious is that in your view? 
It's very serious. You don't just call a grand jury or a special grand jury to actually spin your wheels. And again, the documents are important here. It's not as if you have to just rely on statements of people who can, you know, obviously to err as human. You actually have documents that are going to speak for themselves. Either you signed something or you didn't. Either you inflated or you didn't. Either it was assessed equally and assessed objectively or it was not. That's a very big deal here talking about a grand jury. They're going to look at the documents and decide from there. What are your biggest questions, Laura, on, on all of this this morning? Because it does, I mean, the timing's just interesting, if not more. The fact that it comes, what, less than two weeks after we learned the AG, uh, Letitia James' office yeah. is partnering with the, with the DA here? Well, that's very significant here, Poppy, because think about that. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. They both, in their independent investigations, and mind you, the overlap of the two in this way is actually quite rare, but the underlying facts overlapped in such a way we are seeing that they made it made best sense to actually come together. So where one may have had interviews or depositions, the other actually has documents. You combine the two, and the, and the underlying thread here, if it's about the ideas of tax fraud, avoiding the payment of taxes, deflating or inflating assets accordingly, or even things around the private estates, they're going to combine efforts, not duplicate them with an eye towards indictment. Now, again, as Paula talked about, there is no guarantee. But again, the idea of a specialized grand jury convening with the benefit of tax documents, the benefit of any documents related to um, allegations of fraud, any statements that are made, that is huge ammunition against the organization or anyone within it. Mm -hmm. Trump famously said during the 2016 election in one of the debates, right, that he, he, he doesn't pay or, or reduces his taxes because he's smart, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the question is, did he get on the wrong side of the law here? And, and the potential allegation is that he played both sides of the game, deflating income when it came to taxes to reduce his liability, inflating the value of assets to get loans. What laws would be broken here, potentially, if, if he went too far in either of those things? Well, they're all the fraud-based allegations here. Yeah. The notion here that, look, nothing is certain but death and taxes, and taxes yeah. seems to be even more certain most days. The idea here that you're not able to, na you can navigate the tax code, but you can't break the tax code. And his own statements in the past may be used against him if he, in fact, is the target here in this particular in instance. But remember, one of the things that he might have the benefit of here, Jim, is the idea of counsel, the advice of his tax preparers, the advice of his attorney. Attorneys. We know that President Trump did not, you know, infamously did not keep a lot of a paper trail in terms of text messaging or email. And so he's got a little bit of removal there from the people who may have advised him. Yet and still, that's why someone like a Weisselberg is so important. Somebody who mm. would be able to have these personal conversations with the former president, somebody who'd be able to unpack the intent or what was really intended and whether it was the dog wagging the tail or the tail yeah. wagging the dog. Laura Coates, thank you very much.